then I think everyone should be talking about her. So sorry, Oshin. I'm really am so sorry. <laughs> I'm probably most excited about him at Askin. She has a turn of foot of a group one miler, she really does. Alcohol free is gonna absolutely bolt up it. And he's he's definitely a group of us. Hello and welcome to the Next Gen Racing YouTube channel for our part two of our Royal Ascot preview. And for part two, we are joined by none other than dual champion jockey Oshin Murphy. Oshin, last time we saw you was actually up at Goodwood. Um, the weather was absolutely horrendous that day. I think you actually top and tailed the card. The weather's been a lot better since and the racing's coming thick and fast. I bet you're looking forward to next week. Uh, guys, this is where the action really starts to unfold. I'm super excited for Royal Ascot. And going into it in good form, hopefully I've got really good horses to look forward to. And uh, yeah, I feel good. So thanks for having me on. Let's chat yeah. about them. Yeah, let's have a quick chat. And we are going to chat through uh, Friday and Saturday's racing. We've got five races to quickly preview for you guys. If you haven't already checked out our part one preview of the first three days, we were joined by the finishing line yesterday. Go check that out. That was a really good laugh, and hopefully they've given you some winners. And if you haven't already, do check out our giveaway. We're giving away a signed photo and race card, a finishing line mug, a pair of socks, a pair of Goodwood tickets, and a box of chocolates. Everyone seems to want this box of chocolates in the comments, so um, we're giving that away really. as well. Um, Jack, how can people enter? Funny you should ask, Sam. It's quite simple. Just follow us on Twitter. It's at NextGenRacing underscore. And there'll be a lovely pinned tweet, which should be somewhere around here now. And you just simply retweet that. It's as simple as that. That's it. And we will reveal the winner on our Coral Eclipse preview in a couple of weeks. So let's get into the action now and on to the Friday, the 305, which is King Edward the Seventh Stakes, which is a group two over a mile and a half. Um, last year, this was actually uh, almost like a makeshift derby trial because this was run before the derby last year due to COVID. And I think it was won by Russian Emperor who went on to finish seventh in the derby. Um, Baybridge has been forced out of this race. The, the time of filming, the horse has been pulled out due to foot abscess. So the betting currently looks like this. So Lamarack is 7-2. to two, Alan Kerr is 4-1. to one, Hurricane Lane 6 is. Mohafef is 7th. Bolshoi Ballet, John Leeper. Sir Lucan is 9-1. to one, Double figure the rest. Now... Oshin, it's, you know, we haven't had the full entries as of yet. At the time of filming, it's not easy. We've kind of got to guess who's going to be in here. We see a lot from the Derby, but the one that's interesting in here is the one that's beaten the 2021 Derby winner in Adaya, who's Alan Kerr, who won the Sandown Classic trial. I mean, on paper, if, if it's run to form, this horse has a, a cracking chance and should go and win this. Yeah, I mean, Adaya should have won at Sandown. He was slowly away. He got back on the fence. It was actually a really, really good effort. And then, obviously, we expected Adair to win at Lingfield. And for whatever reason, the ground was quite loose down the hill. It, it had dried up by the Epsom Derby. I mean, we must remember that on Saturday at Epsom this year, it was good ground. The Times proved it. Adair relished it. He probably didn't enjoy it at Lingfield. And if, if we were to run that race again at Sandown, I'm sure Doyle would have liked to have got out, sat closer, and yeah, Alan Kerr won that day. He was good, but he was given a very good ride by Tom Marquand. I do expect him to go close at Ascot. I think they've targeted this race for ages. Uh, William Haggis, his record at Ascot isn't super, as we all know. And I'm sure he wants to set that straight. He's a fantastic trainer. And this has to be one of his leading chances. There we go. OK, um, I actually quite like, I mean, I'm going to go with Aidan O'Brien here and it's not the one at the top of the market. It's going to be Sir Lucan, who's uh, Sir Dragonade's brother. Jack knows how much I love Sir Dragonade, <laughs> but the horse, is, the horse is sure to get this trip. We know that. I mean, at Navin last time, winning over a mile and three quarters, beating Wordsworth. I just think this horse here potentially does look like a ledger horse um, and we might be seeing him towards the back end of the season. But his brother was fairly versatile ground wise. And I think he's a, a fair each way bet at nine to one. Jack, for yourself in this race? I quite like Sir Lamarack. You know, it's a quite a boring selection, but I think the, the way that he did it at Leopardstown last time out was really nice. He came from the back of the field to the, to the front in, in quite quite good fashion. I think Ryan Moore will definitely be taking the, uh, the ride, and I'd be very surprised if he's not thereabouts at the finish. I think he's, he's bred to go this, this distance. And yeah, there's also one who I'm going to give a mention to because I have the, his last two runs, and that's Bellocchio, who of course was behind Adair and Alan Kerr that day. But I mean, he's 33 to 1 today. I know he's got a big race in him. He wants to go further. I, I think he'll probably want to go further than this in time and I know there's a big race in him Serona who he beat on his second start has since 
uh, gone out to finish second in a Group 1 over in France. Of course, he beat Moher Fef on debut as well. And I think there's going to be a big run from him if it comes here. I'm not too sure, but I'll definitely be keeping an eye on him. That's it. Okay, so that is our selections for the King Edward the Seventh States. Now, we'll get on to the Group 1 on the cars, the Commonwealth Cup, the 340 over six furlongs. Um, the American trained horse Campanelle is 5 to 1. Swayza, the French horse, 11 to 2. Dragon Symbol, 8 to 1. Diligent Harry, 9 to 1. Supremacy, who I know Jack's going to bang on about, but I don't want you to bang on about too long. Uh, Battlegrounds, 12. So I'm probably not going to go here. Memento, 12s and 14 to 1. Bar those. Um, Swayza, the French horse, a Shanti specialist, four runs, four wins. Beat you better believe it. You better believe it. Um, who is just double figure prices for the King Stand as well. So really good form there. I think it was 16 lengths he beat. You better believe it, mm. which was a, a real yeah punishing distance. Um, I think he's got a right chance. He's a, a French raider that I like a lot. But the American raider at the top of the market, and Oshin, I've actually just read your blog, and it sounds like you're going to be aboard Dragon Symbol in this. Yeah, I'm going to ride Dragon Symbol. Uh... I obviously, I've ridden him at Kempton before and when he was purchased uh, 12, well, 14 months ago, I rode him uh, and I recommended him and thankfully Mr. Kubota bought him. Uh, I think he's a very good horse. He's been unlucky not to be unbeaten. I respect the French horse. Uh, it, it's not often we get top class French sprinters, but we've had good ones before, the likes of Moonlight Cloud and this one looks pretty good. Uh, Campanelle hasn't had a brilliant prep. I saw her the other day though. She looked good and Frankie's been sealed in to ride her for ages. And of the others, I, I really don't think there'll be too much getting involved. Um, I think Diligent Harry isn't quite good enough. Uh, you can go on about supremacy, but again, I don't know how much how well he's done from two to three. I would just have a few question marks, but hopefully I'm on the right one. OK, well, yeah, hopefully so. And I think the better ground's going to help Dragon Simba. I thought it was actually quite a good run on softer ground last time and I think the horse will definitely improve on this better ground it looks like we're going to get fairly quick going next week by the weather um I actually I mean it's not an ideal prep like Oshin said Campanelle for the Wesley War team still likely race and and did have a bruised hill I think it was and, and missed the ideal prep run that you'd like to see her have but I thought last season's Queen Mary performance was really good um it's not a competent selection but that's who I'm going to be siding with in the race Jack I'll give you literally maybe a minute to just tell us why Supremacy is going to win the, the Commonwealth Cup. Oh, I don't I don't think I'll need that. I mean, a captain always goes down with his ship, doesn't he? It always sinks with his ship. And Supremacy, I know we don't know exactly what he's done from two to three. But, I mean, the middle the middle part last year was just, it's just the best bit of the form in race. Of course, you have Lucky Vega, who was in behind, who was third in the Guineas. And he was sick from reappearance on, well, on his debut last year. So there's kind of, that's the kind of thing that I'm clinging on to and hoping that he can blow away those cobwebs. It was almost too bad to be true last time out. So hopefully it's not true and we can see him bounce back. No, well, let's hope so for your sake. You've been banging on about him for months so we'll have to see so hopefully dragon symbol can go in for Oshie murphy um, i'm going to be with campanelle and jack's going to be with his beloved supremacy now we're going to go on to my most confident selection out of the last two days and that's in the coronation Ooh. states the 420 a group one for the phillies over a mile i'm so sorry Oshie, and i'm really am so sorry mother <laughs> earth is your 72 favorite joan of arc 92 primo baccio i know jack's a big fan of Five to one, pretty gorgeous. Eleven to two, Santa Barbara. Six to one, Potapova, Snowfall, and Snow Lantern. Eight to one, Alcohol Free, Velosa and Saffron Beach are tens and fourteen to one and bigger. The rest seems a really competitive race, but I'm just going to Oshin and let him tell us why Alcohol Free is going to absolutely bolt up here. Guys, Alcohol Free was beaten two lengths in the Guineas, and uh, we when she came out of the race, Andrew um, alluded to yesterday uh, on another Royal Ascot preview that. She was quite ill, uh, and oh. if she wasn't, if she wasn't 100% in Newmarket, and she managed to run that well, uh, and we have her 100% now, then um, then I think everyone should be talking about her. But the beauty is we're going into the race with no pressure, and um, it's, it's not going to be a headline in the race and post that she's now uh, healthier than she was in Newmarket, but we're very sure she is. So that's that's massive. Uh, Primo Bacchio actually saw her work the other day. She she works on the gallop that's behind my house. Um, uh -huh. So I get to see plenty of her. She's incredibly fast, really. Her sectionals at York were incredible. And obviously, this is a much deeper race, but she's on the up. And I think Andrea will probably keep the ride on her. So um, I just respect the pair of them. But obviously, Aiden's got a strong hand. And I'd be interested to hear what you say. Yeah, exactly. I, I think Jack's going to tell us a bit about Prima Baccio who's working out the, the back end of your house. Oh, mm -hmm. she, Jack, why does Prima Baccio win this? 
Yeah, I, I do quite like Primo Vacho. It's I think it's fair to say. I mean, as soon she didn't show that much as a juvenile, but as soon as she came in, into the Fred Darling, I mean, she had to wait for room about two furlongs out. Flew down the outside, as we said, the joint quickest time in the race. Uh, for the last three furlongs in the race, sorry, with Vadrim, and then of course at York, as Oshin said, I mean, it was almost too good to be true. Two furlongs mm. out when Andrea Azzini was just got her into a beautiful rhythm she took it up and i think she has a turn of foot of a group one mile she really does i think she's absolutely perfect for this trip and i mean i'd be very surprised if she doesn't go close i mean she was as keen as anything in the fred darling she was still keen last time out gave away four or five lengths early doors i'd be a bit worried if they go off too quick because then she won't be able to show that turn of foot. But I think if they go at solid section was the whole way through, I think she's got a cracking chance. OK, yeah, it seems like we're, we're all kind of siding with the two of them, Primo Bacho and Alcohol Free. I'd love to see Alcohol Free go in there, or she, and I really have. I've been banging on since the Guineas that this race will suit this horse. I think she, she actually travelled like the winner, or she, in my opinion, in the, the Guineas. Looked at one stage like you, you had it in hand, but obviously something not quite right with the horse. I don't know whether the dip affected the horse at all. Possibly, and it's very hard to say that because she obviously won a Group One at Newmarket. But the, I've I haven't spoken to Andrew about riding instructions yet. But I feel like I'm not going to touch her mouth. Uh, and if that means I'm sat fifth or I'm making the running, that's my plan. Uh, because once you don't organise her, then she never logs. And I think we believe she's going to stay a mile. Uh, she doesn't do anything silly. You don't actually have to choke her. So I'd love to be able to jump out hands on neck and whether I'm sat wherever doesn't matter and just let her do her own thing that that's my plan at this stage lads and I think her work on on uh what day are we today on Wednesday was really really good and I might sit in her again tomorrow she's a you know she's a good filly that I don't think we've seen the best of yet yeah, I definitely agree. Heard yeah. it from the horse's mouth. That's right? it, yeah. So it's going to be alcohol free for myself and Oshin and, and Jack. You're going to side with Primo. Bacho, we'll move on to the Saturday thick and fast here. We're going to go on to the Hardwick Stakes, a group two over a mile and a half. It's the 340, and Broom is your favourite here, nine to two. I've got, I've seen no reason why this horse isn't going to come here, but Broom, nine to two. Huckham is five to one. Pile Drive, the Coronation Cup winner, six to one. Ilarab seven to one, Tiger Moth sevens, Alassi is eight to one, Japan nines, Serpentine probably won't be going here off being declared for the Gold Cup, um, and Sir Ron Priestley is ten to one, fourteen to one bar these. Now, like I say, there's no reason why Broom shouldn't be going here, Jack. I know that you actually fancied Serpentine originally for this race, but I think Broom on this ground, I thought the the run in the Tassels Gold Cup behind Helvick Dream only just beaten. I just think the form of that is is good enough. The, the horse I would actually go mention to, and I'd like to see run well, and, and if declared, I think won't be double-figure odds, is Sir Ron Priestley, who I'd give another chance to. Something clearly wasn't quite right that day. They were, they were a bit confused after the race, seeing why this horse didn't stay that trip, because um, that horse had done it in the past, and I think there was a little bit of confusion. But I think he's a, a horse that over a mile and a half can make it a real test for horses from the front end. Um, and try and bring horses off the bridle one by one. So I just think that he's going to be a lot shorter on the day once a lot of these are pulled out. But I'm actually going to side with Broom myself. Jack, for yourself in this? Yeah, it'll be Broom as well. Of course, I quite like Serpentine for it. He's been supplemented elsewhere. But the, the one interesting stat that I picked up was Sir Michael Stout's got six of the last 12 winners of this, and the only entry he's got is highest ground. He's about 16 to 1 at the moment. I'm not too sure if he'll go, of course, running the Dante last year. But I'm, I think it's quite a bit of a mess of the race. I think it's going to cut up quite a bit still. We're not really knowing who's going where. Of course, Al Arzzi and Pole Driver are still yeah. entered. They're going elsewhere. As you say, saw so Priestley, we're not too sure. But I think I think Broom's a worthy favourite. And if Aidan O'Brien's decided to ten, send Serpentine elsewhere, it may be for a good reason. That's it. I see Broom going 2-1 or one shorter once everything's pulled out of this race. Actually, and the one that is interesting here is Ilarab, un, unbeaten since his debut run. Um, an improving four-year-old for Haggis. He could be the one that could be the danger to a lot of them here. Yeah, guys, I mean, this is just typical Haggis. How he's plotted this horse and how the handicapper has never got hold of him. I mean, it makes you, it ma it's just, it boils my brain. Uh, he's, uh, he's one of the only trainers in Europe that can do this with horses, get them rated in the 70s and just, and he's, he's definitely a group horse. Um, and I agree, he's a big, lazy bugger. He finds plenty, he's going to stay well. Uh, and yeah, he goes there with a good chance. OK, would he be the one that you'd be with in the race or at this stage, would there be sort of one that you'd, you'd prefer to side with? Do you know, I'd love to get a second chance on highest ground. I should have won the Dante on him. 
he's always worked like a very special horse and he should have improved from three to four. I don't know what happened recently, but if the horse is back to his best, then I'd love another go on him. Yeah, he was a horse with a high reputation and, and could definitely outrun his odds. So it's going to be Broom and for myself, Broom as well. And, and for Oshin, you're going to give a, a little chance to highest ground in the um, Harwood Only State. if I can ride him. Yeah. Only if you can ride him. Yeah, only, yeah, yeah. only if you can ride him. What a day. We've so got Michael, alcohol. So and, um, well, that's the day before. And, and highest ground coming in. Oh, next, one day after the other, eh? Jeez, that, could, that could be big. But the, the winner that I'm hoping Oshin's going to have here, well, mm. I'm about to discuss this with him because it's going to be very interesting, is in the Diamond Jubilee Stakes. Now, this is a Group 1 over 6 battle. It's the 420. Star Managed 3 to 1. Dream of Dreams 9 to 2. Nahar 7s. Glass Slippers 8. Art Power 10s, Kate Byron 10s, Glen Shield 14s, and 16 to 1 and bigger the rest of the field. Now, Starman is slowly becoming a, a star sprinter, Oshin. The thing that I want to ask here, because Tom Marquand is, is often, well, he, he's rode this horse the most during its career. However, Haggis has Nahar in this race. Is it confirmed as of yet that you're likely to be riding Starman in the Diamond Jubilee? I've been confirmed for Starman, guys, so hopefully oh. nothing happens. Oh, there it is, yeah. I, I just think I just think that this horse here, I think um, the, the, the last day you sat him in the Duke of York Cliff Logistics sakes, I just thought he looked really good and really smart. I do think he's improving. I, I, I don't know what he feels like and whether he could become a, a bit of a star sprinter. Yeah, he's so laid back, guys. He's an absolute legend to ride. He canters to post half asleep. He's great in the stalls. Uh, in the race, you can do whatever on him. I don't think he burns any energy. He pulled up like 10 strides after the line at York and pricked his ears and had a look around. Uh, and he definitely would have improved from the run physically because he's so big and gross. He should have really needed it. So he's a very exciting. I respect Naha, particularly a stiff six at York. Uh, he finds loads off the bit, a bit like Ilarab. Uh, he's lazy and he could come home strong. Um Obviously, I know Dream of Dreams very well. I just feel like he's getting older. Uh, he'll finish strong. And actually, he's becoming so easy to ride. They used to always break his jaw. But then I decided not to bother breaking his jaw. And, and you saw the results change a little bit. So, um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure Kevin's filly uh, is up to these. I thought she was given a great ride in America. And the five furlong division without Batash last year wasn't super strong. And Art Power will go forward. But again, he still has to prove himself at this mm. level. But it'd be nice to have Art Power and Glenn Shield and the likes as targets. Because we know they'll race prominently. Yeah, 100%. I, I actually think the other Ed Walk horse could actually run well in here. Came from the dark. Who's a, he's a big he's not there. running, lads. He, Definitely he not running. Be, yeah, he won't be at Aston. No, I, can't, I just thought he'd run well on the quicker yeah. ground. Is, is there a confirm where that horse might go next? Uh, he he's got he had an f- easy week due to a setback, so he'll oh, okay. definitely be a little bit of time after asking. He's fine. He's back cantering, but just there you go. Like I say, we haven't got the full entries out as of yet, so it's very difficult for us to select winner. Jack in the Diamond Jubilee for yourself. Who are you going with? I'm with both of you guys. I'm with Oshin. I think Starman's he's class. I mean, I, I was with Oshin. I thought he was going to need the run first time out. But, I mean, goodness me, he was impressive, wasn't he? He was impressive last year. I think the dry conditions are going to suit as well. And I think he's got a cracking chance. Yeah, I really do. Starman seems like the nap of the part two <laughs> preview. Um, that is it for the races. We are going to preview here. I know, Oshin, you have to go. I, I do want to just quickly just give a quick mention to some of the rides that you have earlier on in the week for the first three days as well and anything that you're excited about riding. Potentially, who's your best ride of the week? Masakala and the Chesham is my best ride of the week, uh, He's still very inexperienced, but he learnt enough at, at Goodwood. I think he I gave him a dig out, and he was in between horses a little bit keen. Then he had to race into a headwind. Uh, his Just the feel. I only rode him one day at home, but I thought he was very, very nice. And, um, yeah, he should have been improving all the time. His dam stayed a mile and a half, so he should improve for the step up and trip. And I just love the horse. Uh so I'm I'm probably most excited about him at Askin. I think he'll take the pressures of the day very well. He's just super intelligent. Um, of the others I've, I'm riding, I suppose I, I I hasn't we haven't decided exactly what race he's going to go for. But if Spring of Sprung uh, runs in the Windsor Castle, I'd be gutted if he isn't in the first three. He's a big fat fella, a big raw horse that um has has really a bit like me. He's really improved with. <laughs> his two runs and with galloping at home he just loves hardship 
and there's definitely a big engine there. Um, and in the Norfolk, I ride Wesley Ward's horse, um, Nakatomi or Nakatomi. Nakatomi, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I rode, I rode him at home, and uh, he's, you know, he should be close. He should run very well. Wesley's going to run two in that race. He thinks my one's better than the other one, but you know, we can get it wrong sometimes. Um, and of the other ones, I didn't think my handicap rides were that strong, guys. Apart from if Matthew Flinders relaxes, he pulled way too hard last time. He needed to run at York. Very hard to really fancy a horse in the handicap, but he's going to be like a decent price. And for each way, guys, um, I think he's he'd be there, thereabouts. Yeah, that's it. And I know that the one view of the channel, uh, Charlie Sharp, he's a big mm. fan of Sir Busker. He'll um, he'll want to know just quickly, Sir Busker, the, the chances of taking down the, the heavy odds on favourite Palace Pier. No, we, we all know that if Palace Pier is healthy, uh, he won't be beaten. But Sir Busker, I sat in him last week as well, and he felt as good as ever. Uh, and he actually was really on the ball, and he looks uh, great. So, um, yeah, he loves Ascot. He's going to run well. There we go. So a really excellent book of rides, it sounds like, for Rasheen during the week. Hopefully, you'll be taking home the the Royal Ascot Champion Jockey title that week. (laughs) It's always get one on the board and it's a huge relief. Get two on the board and you're excited and thrilled. And then anything after that is a bonus. But guys, I've I've seen it time and time again. Uh, If the first two or three days go are quiet by the last day, it's pretty hard work and my best rides realistically are on the Saturday but I've got full of chances so um so yeah let's let's keep kicking. But yeah. oh, but, okay. but when you do get a leading jockey you are gonna credit it to us as well. Obviously <laughs> uh, lads if we get <clears throat> if I'm a leading if I'm leading jockey at Royal Ascot uh, I'll be crediting everyone there'll be a big party somewhere <laughs> yeah we'll, 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 come, we'll come along to we'll head up to Newmarket we'll head up to Newmarket <laughs> and we'll join you guys for a few drinks up there but Oshin honestly thanks for coming on with us and, and we wish you the best of luck for the week thanks very much Ed and that's it for our Royal Ascot previews it was great to be joined by the finishing line and Oshin Murphy um, do go check them out on Twitter and also go check the finishing line out on YouTube as well if you haven't already um Tomorrow, Queen Anne, it all kicks off. We're all looking forward to a great week, Jack. Wow. I mean, hopefully we have a few winners there. And most importantly, we're going to have a crowd there, so that's going to be nice to see. It, it is, yeah. I think it was at 10 or 12,000. It's yeah. going to be a, a decent is. number at Royal Ascot. And hopefully that is the sign of a, a bit of normality and hopefully we get a big crowd at Glorious Goodwood, which isn't too far away. That'll be one of the nearest festivals that we're going to be doing next. But yeah, thanks so much for the support that you guys are giving. Don't forget to check out the giveaway. And that's going to last for around two weeks. So plenty of time to get involved. Tell family and friends. You never know. They might want to take you up to Goodwood Racecourse with us. So we're looking forward to that. But thanks for watching and we will see you soon.